Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the solution of this problem. We are given an array of n integers and we are also given an integer key. And we need to find the number of subset having ZOR of elements as k. Okay. So now before understanding what is ZOR, let us first understand what is subset. So basically, suppose we have a, b, c. So we can say that if we take some parts from the array itself and then even if we don't follow the relative order, okay, or we can follow it, whatever be the case, it would be still called as a subset. So that is a part of the array which may or may not be contiguous, which may or may not follow the relative ordering is known as subset. Okay. So we can say that for the array 1, 2 and 3. So the first subset is an empty subset. Then we have only the first element, then first and second element, then first, second and third element, then first and third element, then only the second element, then second and third element and the third element. So basically we have 2 to the power n. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay. But if the value is subsequence, if the value is subsequence, the definition remains the same. The only difference between a subset and a subsequence is that in a subsequence, this null is not present. That is why there are 2 to the power n minus 1 subsequence and 2 to the power n subset itself. Okay, fair enough. Now we need to find the number of array having the ZOR of elements as k. Now, let us see the truth table of ZOR. So, if we have 1, ZOR, 1, then 1, ZOR, 0, then we have 0, ZOR, 0, then we have 0, ZOR, 1. Okay. So, we can say that 1, ZOR, 1, 0, 0. 1, 1. Now, you don't need to remember all this relation. Rather, rather, if you just remember that same 0 and different 1, this is sufficient enough to remember the truth table of ZOR. Now, let me clean the table and let me show you. Okay. So, now that we know what is subset and now we know what is ZOR, we need to find the number of subset having the ZOR as K itself. So, if we have 1 ZOR, 1 ZOR 0, then same 0 and then again same again 0. Fair enough, this is how we would do it. So, now in the first test case itself, we have 6, 9, 4, 2. So, the two subsets are 4, 2 and 6 itself, okay, which has a subset as Okay, so it has only one element. So x zor nothing would be that x only, and then we have four zor two. Four zor two is what zero, one, and two, and this is what one zero two itself. So if we zor this value, then this would be zero, one, one. So this would be four plus two. That is 4. Why 4? Because 2 to 0, 1, 2. 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 2 plus 2 to the power 1. That is 4 plus 2 is equals to 6 itself. That is why the answer to this is 6. So, the value is 2 because we were able to find 2 subset. Okay. Now, we can see that the brute force approach to this problem is that we consider all possible cases. Okay. Consider all subset. So, we take out all the subset of the array by using recursion and then we check how many subset has the value as k itself. Okay. So, now how would we do it? So, to do it, we have two options by using recursion. So, we have, suppose we have 6942. So, we have 6, 9, 4 and 2. 
first I would show you. So suppose let us not take six nine four two. Let us just take one, two, and three. Okay, fair enough. So now we need to find all the subset. So if we want to find all the subset, then the zor itself. So for the first element, for the first element, we have two options. Either to include that element. So if we include that element, this would be one. If we don't include that element, that would leave me blank. Now after this, there comes two branches. and we again have choices for the second element now for the second element if we choose it this is yes this is no so this would be one zor two and this would be just one because we have ignored this two here again there is nothing if we allow this two this would be only two if we don't allow this two this would be empty itself okay this is yes this is no now after this we again have two op opportunities for each one so if we have one zor two so to make a decision for three we have one zor two zor three now to make here this side we would ignore this two so one zor two now again one zor two because we are having this two we are not having this two only one then two zor three so one zor three because we are making a decision for the last one so this one would be 1 zor okay 1 zor 3 and this would be one only then 2 zor 3 and this would be only two then this side we would include this so this would be just 3 and here it would be an empty one now let us just find 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 see we have found all of this and see by using this we can say that we can find all the values so for each condition we have two options so what we can see that for recursion we have three four things the first one is the base case so base case generally you can portray this as the case where you need to stop or there are other conditions also the smallest test case which you can solve by yourself so either it is the one element or i so either you reach the one element or either you reach the end. so here we can see that we need to stop when we are at the leaf node so when we are at the leaf node that means we are at the last index so we can see that the, when the index is equal to equal to last or suppose n we need to stop at that condition okay fair enough now we need the parameters so in the parameters what all things we need we need the zor value of this the leaf node is storing the zor value so i would just have the zor then i would have the index itself so that it would help me in the base case now we have the intermediate case now in the intermediate case we can see that we have an opportunity from both side but we need to we need what we need to do is we need to go and explore both the opportunities and suppose i go here and go here i got two as answer i got one as answer so at the end we need to sum up all those values that is why in the intermediate case we can say that yes plus no so now this is it you would get a better idea when i would start implementing okay for itself let's go with the brute force only okay so what is being done here so we just have a function here and here we need the index also that is why we are also having the wrapper function here this i is the index x is equal to the zor value k is the value that is given and this is the vector itself and this is the size of it okay so now we would start so if we have reached the end that means if i is equals to equals to n okay so now if we have reached the end we need to check after reaching the end if the value is equal to k or not so we would say that return x or we can say that if x is equals to equals to k return 1 else return 0 okay now we move forward and we would do is we would initialize the answer with 0 fair enough now what we would do is we would have i so now there are two conditions for us so int 
a1 that is answer 1 is equals to rec of we need to move forward whatever be the condition then this would store the zor so we would do the zor of a of i okay and then k would remain the same a would remain the same the size would also remain the same in the second one a2 answer 2 is equals to rec of i plus 1 we would move forward here we won't do the zor because we would ignore that value and this would be k and a and n itself then the answer would be equal to a1 plus a2 and then we need to return the answer itself and then what we need to do is return rec of we need to start from the 0th index then we have the value of x okay so we would do zor of 0 because 0 as an initial value won't affect the answer k would remain the same k is capitalized here and then we have the array which is named as a r r a r a r s and then capital n itself now let us just check what mistakes did I did? Okay, so we see that we have a time limit exceeded. So we got a TL error. Fair enough. So this is how we would do it. But we are going TL error. Why we are having this TL error? Because as you know, as you know that recur in the recursion key, we are making the decision for suppose this one again and again. So we are doing repeated things again and again. So Suppose we are doing the same repetitive mistake again and again. What we do in real life is we memorize this, we memorize this mistake so that we don't remember this in, in future. So in the same way, what we would do is we would save the answer and then we would use when needed. How would this help? This would help because if the value is already pre-calculated, then the repetitive work which is increasing the time complexity won't be done and we, it would collectively reduce the time complexity to a large extent. So, what we would do is we would memorize the answer. Now, to memorize the answer, we need a data structure. Now, to need a data structure, we need to first see what things in the parameters are static and what are dynamic so we can say that i is changing here i is changing to i plus 1 and then i plus 2 and i plus 3 these all things x is also changing to the zor value of a of i k is constant a is constant n is constant now we know that we have two values that are changing so if we have two values that means we need a data structure a 2d array would also solve the purpose now, what would be the size of the 2D array? So, the i would start from 0 and if i reaches the condition n, that means it would end. So, what we would do is, we would see the largest extent n can, n can be. So, n can be to an extent of 20. Okay. So, what we would do is, we would first initialize a DP array. Okay. So, of 25, so that we don't clash with anything. And then we need to have the ZOR value. So, the value at max can be 100. So, 100 is represented as 1100 and then 100. So, now in the worst scenario, everyone can be a turned on bit. So, what we would do is we would have an array of 200. 180 would also solve the purpose, but we would have 200. Fair enough. And then we would have mem set. We would, this would make all the values of the DP array as minus 1. Now, what we are doing is, we are writing all the mistakes in a notebook. Fair enough. Now, whenever we are trying to do a mistake again, we open the notebook and we see that yes, this mistake has not been committed. So, we need to commit that mistake, learn the values from it and then we would write it. In the same way, if the value is minus 1, that means the value is not calculated. So, what I would say that if 
dp of dp of i and x is not equal to minus 1 this means that it has been already been calculated so we would just return this value instead of calculation and after that suppose we committed that mistake or in in the say we have computed the value then we would just before returning we would save the value dp of i and x is equals to answer fair enough and yes we have successfully solved this problem that's it for today thank you and have a nice day